With a thick ass, with a cute face, with a nice cash, only blue faces, with a stank face, so like blues faces. Orange faces, fuck Donald Trump, ain't no fake ass like McDonald's lunch. Talking shit and I'll make you hush. But you niggas need to tighten up, and I don't look for clout, I just look for coins. When I hit the block, bitch, boing, boing, bing, bing, big rock, bitcoin, private, IP, you cannot find me. Nice mouth, gold teeth, slow jams, I'll be. Hi, y'all, and welcome back to get the Creating uh, Cloud series. This is Slow Jams. Hi, so would you like to introduce yourself? Yeah, I'm Slow Jams, coming from out of Miami. At this time, I'm 20 years old. Um, what part of Miami are you from? Because you know, Miami's kind of big. I was born in Richmond Heights, then I moved to Kansas City, and then I moved to 79th Street, and then Hylia, and then Northern, <laughs> and then back down to Homestead, and then back to Richmond Heights. So you've been all over, basically. <laughs> And that has to influence your music in some type of sense, do you think? Yeah, because there's like different cultures. Well, not cultures, but different vibes you get. Like in Kindle, you have more um, of like a skateboard. Everybody says that you love, no matter what race you are. How do you feel about that? Because that's important. That I, you bring that up. <laughs> I feel like, if, look, you could say nigga if, if, you, if you have lived a nigga lifestyle. If you really understand, nigga, I will understand that you use it. But if you just go to school and you don't do anything, you never been in a nigga predicament, you shouldn't say nigga. So, so you're okay with others saying nigga outside of the community? Yes. If, if they have lived a nigga lifestyle. Yes. If you okay. don't really fuck that. Okay. I, say I actually was on campus here at FIU, and they had like a speaker, Marcus Hill, I want to say, don't quote me, but he was like, if the police don't look at you like a nigga, then you can't say it. And that's kind of similar to what you're saying. Like, yeah. if you don't, like, if you have not have the right type of, of like, experience, yeah, then you should be saying, yeah, say you have nigga yeah definitely. So I feel that. Um, now, on every Create and Cloud interview, I ask the artists who are their top five, like, doesn't matter what genre, what music, but who inspires you in your top five? Um, Lil' Kim, with yeah. me, because of the fashion, the color tone, like the one color thing. That was one. I feel it. She's not. Um, Nikki's like her expressions. You know, I'm not. I'm not very expressive, very monotone. My music, I am, but not like this. I'm not crazy. Mm -hmm. Um, Lauren Hill, because of the realness. You know, you don't have to be greedy all the time. Little way, cause the bars, the wordplay, <laughs> you can hear like some of the vibes I get from him. And the temperament, the beat wise. Wow. So, yeah. That's a good mix up. But that mix up is heavily female. Does that speak to like who or how like you express yourself as an artist? Would you say it associates like your femininity? It speaks through your work? Yeah, it does. I have a lot of not sexist lines, but lines that you think I should not say, like S and D things like that. Yeah, and I love the song "Kick." That's like a perfect song oh, yeah. as an example of that, right? <laughs> yeah. Girls get freaky too, and that's a little Kim vibe too, right? So, outside of rapping, do you have any other musical skills? Um, like, mixing and mastering. Even one recently. Don't listen to anything between. Um, <laughs> Basically, harmonizing. I don't sing, but I can harmonize. I can recognize a note. And that's pretty much it. And I love writing lyrics, but they're singing or rapping, I love writing lyrics. And I know, like, outside of music wise, you have done, like, graphic designing and stuff in the past. Yeah, I started doing graphic design. I did my first song at 13, then I stopped. My foundations were switched, so I'll even be um, an audio person, so I'll be visual. And I just fell back into the audio. I'm back into the visual part of the music videos. Mm -hmm. But it's just, I didn't like I didn't like doing graphics so long for other people because it's kind of hard to communicate, you know, certain creative information, my creative information. Yeah. I would get frustrated, so I just stopped. Yeah. So 
So that helped like open up your career and your whole path now. And you brought up how like don't listen to like stuff in the past. So how do you think your sound has changed? I think it. I think it evolved. I think it, it evolved forward and then backward to the original state. Cause at first I did do a lot of um, vintage songs and music, mm-hmm. like some old school. Then I tried to do like the modern take. You know, I thought the twenty sixteen kids would like things like that. Mm-hmm. And then I just felt more comfortable doing the old school vibe, so I went back to that. And I think, I think for me, derailing into the modern sound, that was a good thing for me to get out the way now within two years and then go back to how it was. Cause that was more solid. So I, I know what my sound is now. That's cool knowing that what your sound is. Like, when it comes to finding your own path, it kind of takes people a moment and a minute. Like you said, like you started like creative designing and then you started um, rapping. But outside of those elements, how do you kind of like foster a supportive like environment to like get that creative element. How did I grow like people that help me? Like, yeah. One, your conduct. My conduct is what um is what a lot of people like me because my behavior. I'm not super. I'm not super nice, but I'm super loyal and mm-hmm. super chill. You know, I'm not mean either, and I'm a clown, so a lot of people like that. <laughs> and also, you can hear it in my music. And if you don't, you can back search it somewhere and find out like that. So. I think it's just my personality that really reached out to them. I don't really do a lot of like lives and things like that where I open up or blogs. I mean blogs. Mm-hmm. So I guess I should more, but I'm a super calm. But I don't have people that are my personality, so I guess I should open up more. But I'm not people like me for being calm, so I'm not really like Yeah. Trying to be out Yeah, going with the flow just when it comes in. So that's how yeah. I, that's how I started getting on just the way I am and the way I dress. So Yeah. This outfit, by the way, flies well. <laughs> When she called me, (laughs) when you called me, you were like, I'm in all green. You should probably see me. And I was like, okay. And then when I saw you, I was like, oh my God, I love her outfit. So (laughs) popping, makeup's popping today. Feeling it. Um, So I wanted to talk to you kind of about the lyrics of some of your songs. I was listening to The Broads. <laughs> but like I was listening to the brides and you were you said at like the very last line um something about like it's time for dark skinned women to come out and like light skinned women to take a seat. No hand and Amanda nah. put the fuck up your levels don't come for me unless I ask for delivery pizzas recipes or you can rest the pizzas good pussy or is it good pizza and Shay or are you gonna hang with the Lisa? Uh yellow skin bitches make room for the black skin bitches. Can you kinda explain how colorism has affected mm-hmm. what you have seen mm-hmm. and what you have personally experienced in the music industry as a female? Alright. I'm just gonna say it from observing mm-hmm. because that's the least knowledge that you get, mm-hmm. even though your intuition and common sense will put two and two together. So if you think about all the female artists that are out, not all of them look like me. Like not all of them have my tone or darker, you know. Yeah. Stephen Streeter went down. Easter Dean went down. She's a songwriter, but nobody really gave her like the glory and the praise, you know, in her category. Um, I don't know if Melly, Melanie Fiona counts because she looks dark, but she's not. You can tell she's not. Like, yeah. African American dark. She went down to, even though Azalea Banks' attitude was like, you know, bipolar as fuck, she was already down here. So for her to do what she did, she went even lower. So, yeah. But the ones that are high up, you know, Beyonce, Rihanna, Nicki Minaj, and Cardi B, it's like mm-hmm. all of them do not look like me, like at all. That's very true. But from it's T and that, and this actually participating in it, and even locally, I see like certain candidates that are really good. And I don't know if I should name drop because I don't want to look like I'm talking shit because I know how some people are. But there are some artists that are really good and they're dark skinned or they're darker than me, and they really have better bars than some of the girls that are lighter. That are like being the faces of this new Miami, Miami area. Yeah, and I think the the dark skin role plays a lot because you have to be like universally accepted or internationally accepted. Like Cardi B, she feels like 
but she doesn't look black. But then she's Hispanic, but then she's on a pop song, so she grabbed like she she's marketing me everywhere. in a way. <laughs> exactly. So I think that plays a really big part. And then you can see how little Kim felt so pressured by it, what happened to her. So I think that's the I was watching a documentary, like the Cape Soap documentary about Jamaicans like bleaching their skin and stuff. Oh, so. And they brought up I don't know if you watched it all the way, but like yeah. at some point like Nikki and Lil Kim and I remember some other female artists have like lightened their skin over the years and like changed their perception to maybe fit that element like you were talking about, like just mm-hmm. feeling like they have to be socially acceptable by life is right. So, I don't know. I'm hoping that the music industry changes, but you're completely right. We need to get back to bars being bars, not what the female looks like or what her skin tone is like. Or even if it was how they look. I think the look should be what is is the best looking thing. doesn't mean it has to be this, that, this, that, this, that. Just what looks best. Yeah, for example, whatever color, just what's best. I can feel that. So... Speaking about artists, you've opened up for Cuba Doll and Famous Dex. How are those experiences for you? Like, All I'm gonna say is everything you see is not real. Just understand that everything you see is not real. Mm-hmm. And that's um, but the audience there, the audience, the audience at the Dex show was very like proud to turn. Uh, that was like one of my first big shows mm-hmm. for me. So. I just felt energetic, and I was really, I was really, I was really thankful that I got to open up on that spot because it's a really big crowd, and down here, we don't really get like a lot of our, we don't really get a lot of buzz down here until somebody out of town comes. Even if somebody who's popular in town, they really, they don't really even get that much buzz. Yeah, from, like, people from out of town. So I was really thankful that it was really fun. That's all I have to say. <laughs> um, that's. A- Either way, it's a dope experience, and I know that like a lot of kids, artists, people coming up, because you're relatively young, like you're 20, like you said, mm-hmm. um, are trying to figure out how to get into the field or kind of get started. How would you say you kind of like broke into the industry? Not like you don't have to give away your key secrets, mm-hmm. but like what advice would you give? Um. Listen to music before you start making music. Like you should try to figure out what is it that you think people would, would like, whether it be Lil Kim, Lil Pump, Lil Uzi Vert, no matter who it is. Just figure out, just listen, and just figure out either this time or the time before. Because a lot of people they don't listen to enough music before they hop in. Just you know, you have to like you know how you go to school and you study what you want to do. You got to kind of do that too. You can't just hop in there. I don't it's care how rapper. much. I don't care how much like passion and intuition you have, you still have to add information to this passion. Like yeah. to really navigate the way you want. So that's what I'll say. And believe in yourself. So, yeah. Don't just do music because your homeboy doing it and you have nothing to do right now. Yeah. That's not what you're here for. Be in there for the long run. And mm-hmm. I feel like that whole like popcorn type music or not to hate on like the little Uzi's and little littles <laughs> all the littles, but um everyone's kind of popping up with their own different sound. Mm-hmm. Do you feel like that is helping the music industry, hip hop, like world? Or do you feel like it's hurting? Cause I know that you specifically source a lot of your music from the nineties. You have a lot of like beats and samples from like 20 years ago, right? Yeah. Do you think like, but like at the same time you have a flow more like a modern new age rapper so how do you feel about just like those two worlds colliding i guess is what i'm asking what i would say is because i used to feel like it was super separate in some ways it is in some way it isn't because even back then there were some songs in rap that just were like trash but everybody hyped them up yeah so just how today is there's some trash songs out here but everybody hyped them up um i think it's i would say that it's good because it's different and you know, let's say if I've never heard of these, let's say they never blew them, but strictly the same formula that we all assume hip hop would be in the old school days. There wouldn't have been like crossovers like Lil Wayne would come in or Drake's because they're taking like certain vibes from different times and just mushing it together and making it even more creative than each of them. Even though 
one may seem like it's less work than the other one. But I feel like the fact that the song exists is a good thing to add to like the pop of music just to get it more flavors than you're going on. Because there are a lot of like dope ass beats out of here nowadays. I'm like, damn. And yeah. then back then, a lot of beats back then were probably the same. So these here are like a lot of crazy beats been coming out recently in this era. Yeah. And I think the production has gotten better. Not the not the actual complexity of the songs, but just the beat selection, the cover art, things I've been seeing. Like the creativity around the music has been getting better. So that yeah. kinda influences me to take some of that and then of course another old school and mix it together. I don't think everybody should do popcorn music, but I think the fact that it exists, I just accept it because it's here. I don't yeah. like you don't hit on it, you know. Yeah, I don't feel too hard yeah. about it. Yeah. yeah. I feel like and I appreciate the way that you manage to blend mm -hmm. the new age with the old. Because mm -hmm. we need that. We need that recognition because I feel like a lot of people are not necessarily paying homage to like our founders. Yeah, out. and then it's one thing not pay homage and it's another thing to disrespect them. You know, that really yeah. would piss me the fuck off when people, oh, better than Tupac, better than this and that, better than this and that. <laughs> it's like, it's like, it's like you, have to be a, you have to be a troll or an idiot to just not accept facts. Like, yeah. I don't care how much you, like, ride for somebody that's in the way, you cannot just blatantly deny facts, especially with awards and all the accolades and stats and plays behind it to back it up. Yeah, for sure. That's cool. It's just about being respectful at the end of the day. Yeah. And logical. <laughs> exactly. But outside of that, do you have any new projects that you could have been working on coming up? I don't have any projects that I'm working on to say. I do have singles that uh, like, I'm getting ready to drop for all next year. But I don't have a project for right now. Um, just because I, my first project was old school, and then my second project was new school. And I'm just going to. I'm not gonna do a third project. I'm just gonna focus on putting my face to my songs. Some people like, I don't think you rap. You, no, you can't rap. Like, I do, but I didn't. I don't look like it when you see me walking around on Instagram. Maybe you'd be like, okay, but she still looks like she'll be a model or something. Yeah. People still don't take me seriously. So I think if I just start putting my face to my song by dropping these videos and like some really good behind the scenes work and all that, that would help me out rather than a project right now. So, no, that's your project anytime soon. <laughs> but how you're talking about like your face matching your face to your sound, do you like get a lot of your inspiration from modern culture and hip hop? Are you like styling yourself personally? Like, how do you kind of like feel out that whole model type vibe? Because you do personal modeling on the side, right? I have before. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, how do you like kind of blending? How do you balance your like? All your side hustles. I just separate it um, by contact, sometimes by device, my phone for this, this for that. Yeah. This account name for that, this account name for that. Yeah. I won't cross promote because then to people, I just don't cross promote because if my photography crowd don't know about my rap crowd, they probably more likely won't take me seriously, you know. And then vice versa, they won't think, oh, she could be a model too, so I don't call her or some shit, you know, things like that. Um, keeping it separate has really been helping me. Because I just don't like my circles overlapping friends or even my hustles to overlap different um, customers. Or, I don't want to say fans, people who listen to my music. Yeah. I just don't like things like that to overlap. That's just how I am. I just like me. So you brought up um, shooting your videos for the next couple of months until like next summer, right? Mm -hmm. um, do you like direct your videos for the most part? Like how? Your visuals are dope as fuck. Mm -hmm. Like all the creative elements I'm here for. It. So mm -hmm. I guess just kind of how do you go through that process? Because you were talking about working with other creatives earlier. Well, when it comes to music videos, um, in the past I had some videos that I still have a that I felt like those videographers tried me in some, and it's not a Miami thing, it's not a videography thing either, it's a people thing, because there's type of, there's different type of people who do different type of jobs or occupations, so you will come across these people. Mm -hmm. And some of these people were selfish, so I just, I, at first I stopped doing videos, because I just got so upset with a lot of people, that I feel like a lot of people don't really understand me until they really, really talk to me, because they just assume, yeah, this is what she'll do, she'll do the whole guns, it's supposed to be in the video. Tattoos, like a lot of the female rappers are on Instagram now. It's not, I'm not that like, yeah, I'm more complex than that. 
So I came across this videographer named Kilo, and I saw some of the work he did. It was jaw, it was jaw dropping, and then he does his work fast, high quality, and nice, nice temper. There's no like friction. I don't feel any personal thing. Like there's nothing there, but business and just creative ideas. So I make sure now I make sure I kind of talk to them before I just say, okay, let's do something on this date, you know, things like that. And then there's no real like reading going on. I want to be able to read you a little bit, so yeah. you can read me, and then we can do like a very good visual. A lot of my visuals start out with me thinking about colors when I hear my song or the vibe or sometimes I bounce off the cover art. So the cover art for Super is Orange and I was like, okay, um, I think I should do an orange thing. I'll draw it out, I'll color it. And then I show the videographer and he's like, okay, we'll do it. And then we start looking up props and settings and just get everything going and set the dates and record and just improvise on set. So it's like a real actual thought out process and i'm glad you're like involved in your process because yeah. i know that some artists are just like you overboard me mm -hmm. um and we slap them together but you're like really in to the intricities yeah you know, if you're gonna do like a basic video you might as well take a picture like there's no point of going to the work yeah. <laughs> you just that's how i feel yeah i feel it mm -hmm. okay so I guess if you have any kind of like last things you want to say or advice you want to give to yeah. people pursuing their craft, yeah. um, what is it? I would say, when it, uh, like I said before, along the way it's going to be different attitudes no matter what career you go along. Do not waste your time like barking at every dog, I mean fighting at every dog that barks at you on the way to your journey because then you'll never get there. From experience, I have I had altercations where I felt like I had to go tooth and nail at this person or someone. But I noticed that sometimes some people are going to change and you cannot change them no matter what you say or how much money you throw in their face. Uh, you cannot assume that everybody's going to think like you no matter if you're right or wrong. There's not exactly one person in this world like you. That's why you're unique. So as unique as you are, so is the other person that's combating with you. So you can't just... You can't just waste your time on things like that. I'm not saying that it's always going to try negative, but you cannot allow it to go down a negative road if you just keep talking a certain way or allowing them to talk to you a certain way. You have to remember if you just stay focused on what you're doing and you block out everything that doesn't sound right, you will get there. Like, there's a willpower and a lot of things. People, a lot of people is like, oh, you think you're famous now and things like that. I know say that's jokes, not the talk shit. Like, yeah. jokes. And I tell them, it's like, I really didn't have nobody to really help me, like, and a lot of things at school, at home, I was just always independent and I just had willpower. If I never felt like doing anything I did, I would not be sitting here like in this couch right now. If I fell asleep when I should when if I fell asleep when I was up writing songs and things, I probably wouldn't have got exactly where I'm at. So just focus on what you wanna do, take in information that you get, you know, observe other people and then participate around that area. And I'm telling you, the universe is gonna pay you back. So most definitely. That's dope. And I appreciate that advice. Oh, yeah, take that. Just follow really? what you're doing. For real. Mm -hmm. And all y'all pay attention to that, because that's like pure facts. Free game. Free game. <laughs> Thank you for you're coming welcome. out and interviewing me. Mm -hmm. It was really dope. I had a great okay. time with you. That's that. Should be my Aston Martin party. <laughs> um, the switch, but. I didn't know what the hell I was doing, in my defense. Like, I wasn't that great. That's what they I lost was all the way through the beginning. I made her sit like an hour and play with me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now she be mad with Mario. Yeah. You see, I try to rep Luigi with the green button. J R uh, sing alone, my niggas. Nigga. Sing alone. Spray for the niggas. Spray for the guns. That's my quarter, nigga. Smoke, smoke with the nigga. Smoke, smoke. One for the guns, two for the niggas. Pray for the guns. That's my quarter, nigga. Oh, oh, oh.